live in an old traditional building, you'll know how hard it is to make it warm and dry. Particularly if it's prone to flooding or the walls get damp every time it rains hard. How do you make a building able to cope better with flooding and extreme weather? That's the challenge that the owners of this property behind me, 33A Chapel Street in Appleby, Cumbria, have now embarked on. Thanks to funding from Historic England and the Big Lottery, you'll be able to watch fortnightly videos to see how the project's coming along. You'll be able to get practical advice on the techniques, the type of materials that are best used in an ordinary but an older terraced house like this one, uh, so that it will be more resilient if and when it floods again in the future and when it rains and is cold in the winter. We'll also give advice on how to avoid the common pitfalls. So let's go in and meet one of the owners. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? All right. Come on in. Thank you. This is Chris Morfitt from Lake District Lime. Hi Chris. Hi um, uh, Could you tell us a bit about the house, how old it is and what's happened to it in the past? I can, yeah. So it's 1800s. It's a stone built property. Um, it was formerly used as a charity shop. So mm -hmm. it was a, a commercial property and it's been plastered with cement and it's also susceptible to flood. I understand it's got quite a history of flooding. Yes, it's been on a number of occasions, but the last one, Storm Desmond, was up to about that height. So you're turning this house into a home, Chris. What are you going Hopefully, to be doing yeah. to it? Yeah, well, we're going to be busy. We're going to start by removing all the plaster from the walls and stripping back all the later addition add-ons of like the um, stud walls here that are in gypsum. And once that's done, we'll allow the building to dry out, and then we'll be looking at fitting again. Firstly, downstairs will be flood resilient, so the sockets will be up at height. Uh, also, the boiler and the kitchen will be made from a, a product that's easily wiped down. And upstairs will be lime plastered and using breathable uh, fibre boards, things like that for ceilings. Are you going to improve the insulation of the property? At the yeah, we're going to use a lime plaster that's uh, it, uh, cork based and then there's another that has a lime hemp mm -hmm. um, so we'll be using both those products. So Chris's architect is Joe Connolly and we're also using the services of James Innerdale who's a conservation architect and we've had various experts from Historic England that have been monitoring the house and using um, equipment to monitor the humidity and the temperatures within the house. We were able to film the renovation of this house thanks to Historic England's funding through the Appleby Heritage Action Zone. That's being run by Eden District Council and we'll meet their project manager, Adrian Bamford, later in the project. And of course there's our filmmaker Paul from Explainer HQ in Kendall. I see here we've got one other person that we need to introduce. He's obviously the site supervisor. That's Who's it, this? yeah. This is the boss. This is Nettle. And Hi, she Nettle. comes with me on site to where we go. So uh, she'll be with us throughout the, the whole process, keeping us right, yeah. Great. Fantastic. Well, looking forward to uh, following the bills, Grace. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thanks. See you soon. All right.